Okay, so gases, um, they have very different chemical properties, but they have similar physical properties as solids and liquids. Okay, so one very important uh, property that we need to know about gases is that even if you have a mixture of it, it acts like it's one gas. So as you can tell from the air around us, right? You can't really tell that there's a mixture of airs, of, of gases around us. It all seems like one substance. So that's one property about them. It makes them a little different. Um, they expand to fill their container. Now, the easiest way to visualize this is if I farted right now, the gas would slowly expand and travel to the corners of the classroom, right? So that's what gases do. We're all familiar with this. Okay, they're highly compressible. So if you have gas in a piston, you can compress the gas down and they form homogeneous mixtures, regardless of what type of gas you have. So no matter what type of uh, compound you have, um, when you mix them together, they kind of are homogenous. It's a mixture where it all kind of looks the same, has the same type of properties and things like that. Okay? Yes. Do gases change on the temperature? Oh. Yes, we're going to talk about that in just a second. Okay, so there are a couple properties about gases that we need to define before we start doing uh, calculations with it. Um, and the first is pressure. You guys don't need to write this formula down. You guys might have seen it in physics. Um, but pressure is just the amount of force that's on a given area. Okay, so what pressure... Uh, has to do with gases is gas molecules are always flying around. And if something is flying around, they're bumping into different surfaces, right? So they're bumping into you, they're bumping into me, the wall, everything around us. And that creates a certain pressure. Okay, and that's, some, that's what we measure here. Now, there are some different units of measurement that we use for pressure. The most common that we'll be using are atmospheres, which is ATM. Uh, we'll also use TOR. And I think those are the two that we use the most. There are other ones that come up, but these are the two that are the most important. So you can basically think about uh, pressure as how hard the gas molecules are hitting a surface. So if we increase the pressure, they'll be hitting you much more. And if we decrease the pressure, they'll be hitting you less. Okay. Any questions on pressure? Oh, you guys can look at this later, but these are the conversion rates. But again, the most important thing are atmospheres and support. Okay. All right. Yes. Um, is pressure how fast it's being rolled? Or how it fast? has to do with that, Um, but it's the amount of force they exert. Yeah. There's a, yeah, we'll talk about that later. It has some, it has a little bit to do with the velocity at which the gas molecules are moving, but it's a little bit, it's dependent on each other, but they're separate quantities. Okay. Yeah, and then you have a question. Okay, for sure, yeah. yeah. So that's pressure, it's the amount of force. So instead of thinking how fast it's moving, it's basically how hard it's hitting you. And then the speed would be one factor that has to do with that, right? Okay. The second uh, property of gases we need to know about is volume. We're very familiar with volume. It's how much space something takes up. Okay, and gases fit, expand to fill their container. So if you have one mole of a gas, you can fit it into a very small container, but it, you can also fit a mole of gas in a extremely large container. It just fills up, it expands to fill the uh, to fill the container. Okay, the second or the third uh, property we're gonna talk about is gonna be temperature. And temperature is what has to do with the speed, okay? The temperature is the average kinetic energy of the gas molecules. So if you have a hot gas, it moves faster than a cold gas, okay? And those are the three, I guess, big quantities we'll talk about right now. Um, the most important thing about temperature when we're doing our calculations, though, is that we always have to use um, the, the unit Kelvin. Okay, so you guys might want to write this down. Okay, I know that here in the U.S. we use Fahrenheit, which is kind of a stupid unit of measurement. Um, but most of your problems and different countries, they use Celsius. Uh, and it's an easy conversion to Kelvin. You just need to add 273.15, okay? And so whenever you're using temperature in your calculations, just make sure it's always converted to Kelvin, okay? So if it's given to you in Celsius, you have to convert. Uh, very rarely, yeah. I don't think they ever do. I might do it just to mess with you guys, um, but yeah. We'll skip a uh, 5.1 because it's very easy. You just need to convert it. You just need to add 273 to it. Okay. 
All right. Okay, I know it's a lot of info. It's an info dump, but then we'll get into the problems in just a second. Um, now, there is something called STP. It's called Standard Conditions for Temperature and Pressure. Um, and so because we talked about how temperature and pressure changes the properties of the gas, right? Um, there's a standard metric that we use as kind of a baseline. And STP means that the gas, and this is the important part, is at one ATM. So the pressure is one ATM and the temperature is 273.15 Kelvin, which is zero degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's what STP means. So in this unit, if you ever see the term STP, um, the gas is at STP, it means it's one ATM, 273 Kelvin. Yes. No, so if it's, that's a good question. So if you're not given it, most likely you'll have to calculate it. But if it says explicitly that it's STP, then you can assume these conditions. Yeah, but if it doesn't give it to you, you're most likely going to have to calculate it. Good question. Yes. And then also it said uh, STP is zero degrees Celsius. Yes. Mm -hmm. So very cold for us. All right, before we move on to the next part, any questions? Sorry, I know that was just info, info, info. All right, so let's talk about gas laws. So um, gases, when you change one of those properties, if you change pressure, it will also change things like volume and temperature. And that's where we get these relationships called gas laws. Okay, now the first gas law we're going to talk about is called Boyle's law. Okay, and Boyle's law assumes constant temperature. So you're assuming that the temperature does not change. And this is the calculation right here. P1V1 equals P2V2. You probably want to jot that down on your notes. P1V1 equals P2V2. Okay. And basically what this relationship tells us is if the pressure goes up, the volume goes down. So pressure and volume have an inverse relationship. They go in opposite directions. So let's say I had a balloon right here, right? At a certain pressure, this is P1. It's also going to have a specific volume, right? If I let the balloon go outside and it flies very, very high, um, the pressure is going to go down. So that means there is less pressure pushing in on the balloon. And so what that means is the volume of the balloon is going to go up. Okay, so less pressure on some on a gas, the bigger the gas is going to get. It's just an inverse relationship. Pressure and volume move opposite from one another. Any questions about that one? So you don't need to memorize that it's Boyle's law. Um, the most important thing is that you know this relationship that they're inverse from one another. Okay. Okay. Second gas law is called Charles law, and Charles law means that if you increase the temperature, so if you heat up a gas, the bigger the gas will get, and if you cool down a gas, the smaller it will get. Okay. So if I had a balloon and I heated it up, it would get bigger. If I cooled it down, it would get smaller. So I don't know if you guys ever did this, but if you put a refrigerator in the fridge, or no, not a refrigerator in the fridge, a balloon in the fridge, or the freezer, you guys might have seen that the balloon gets smaller. You guys ever tried it? Yeah, okay, it's just me. When I was a kid, I wanted to keep the balloon longer, so I put it in the freezer and then it shrank. I was very disappointed. Okay. But yeah, that's Charles' law. If you heat it up, it gets bigger. If you pull it down, it gets smaller. And this is a relationship. Okay, third gas law is Gay-Lussac's law. It's a French name. Um, if you increase the temperature, you increase the pressure. Okay, so if you had like a, I don't know, like a pressure cooker, right? It's sealed, the gas can't come out. You heat it up, the gas molecules will move faster inside of the pressure cooker. And this is the equation right there. And then the fourth one is kind of a combination of all of them. So it's called the combined gas law. So we just put all three of the variables together like that. So these gas laws, um, solving them is pretty easy. The most important things to remember are that you need to convert temperature into Kelvin and that you just identify what these 
uh, the starting conditions are and the ending conditions are. Those are the two things that are most important. So we'll try an example right now. Okay, but before we do 5.2, any questions? Chilling? All right. You guys are probably tired of me talking now. We'll just do a problem. Okay, 5.2. So a sample of nitrogen gas has a volume of 2.4 liters and a pressure of 1.5 atmospheres. What volume would the gas occupy at 4.9 atmospheres if the temperature really remains constant? So first thing we want to identify is which gas law we should use, right? Now you guys notice we have volume, we have pressure, and we have pressure. So we have one volume, one pressure, another pressure, and another volume. So which one of the gas laws should we use? Yeah, Boyle's law, the first one, P1, V1 equals P2, V2. Now, it's also important to identify which side of the equation we put it on, right? We got to make sure that the variables are together. So if you look at 2.4 liters, this is probably our starting condition, right? Because it's saying, what would, it, what would happen to the volume if the gas occupied 4.9 and temperature remained constant? So these two are connected together. This is at the beginning. So this would be our P1 and our V1. So we would just put 1.5 atmospheres and 2.4 liters equals, and then the variable that we're solving for is the chain, the volume, the new volume at 4.9 ATM. And so we can solve for V2. So the hardest part here is just interpreting the question, which you guys probably have figured out by now. Hardest part of AP Chem is figuring out what where the variables go in the equations. Um, but after that, the math is pretty simple. You just need to solve for the missing variable. So we can just plug that into our calculator. Left side of the equation is 1.5 times 2.4. And then we can isolate V2 by dividing by 4.9. Yes. Uh, so what would we say, like the 0 0.73 um, atmospheres per liter or liters per atmosphere? Uh, it's actually just liters. Because oh, yeah, yeah the, the atmospheres will cancel each other out and then you'll be only left with liters. Also it's volume, so you know it's probably gonna be liters or milliliters or something. No, you're good. All right, hopefully not too bad. You guys wanna try 5.3 on your own? I'll give you guys about two minutes to do it. You can check with the person next to you. And then after that, we'll go on to the next one. Perfect. Okay, so here, if we look at our variables, which gas law did you guys use? Yeah, Charles law, because we got volume and we got temperature. So we're going to do V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. Okay, now um, we, have a we have a volume, so we'll plug that in for V1. So we got 12 liters. Now on the bottom, I can just plug in 38.8, right? No, what do we need to do? Yeah, we got to add 273 because we need to convert it to Kelvin. Okay, so if we add two, uh, 273, we get 311.95 Kelvin Okay, for T1. So that was the tricky part of this equation. You had to convert into Kelvin. Okay. okay, we have another temperature right here. So again, since it's in Celsius, we have to add it to Kelvin. One quick tip I can tell you is that you will neg never have negative Kelvin. Okay, Kelvin is an absolute scale, which means that Zero is when there's no movement, nothing is moving. And so zero, negative Kelvin is impossible. So if you ever see negative temperature, um, just make sure you convert it into Kelvin, okay? Yeah. Uh, no, because there's some kind of movement in the universe and it's all connected somehow. So, yes. Uh, there will just be no move, like the molecules will not be moving at all, but it's, Theoretically possible, physically impossible, because even in the coldest place in the universe, there's still some kind of radiation, some kind of matter going into that. It's one, it's one system. And so you can get very close, but not to actually zero degrees go. Okay. All right. And this would become uh, 233.25 Kelvin. And that's what we would plug in at the bottom right here. Any questions about this one? Yeah, the tricky part was converting it to Kelvin. And then you just solve for volume. V2, you should get 8.97 liters. Okay. All righty. 
Okay, so that's going to be using gas laws. We're going to skip 5.4. That's the use of the combined gas law, but it's basically the same thing. You just have two more variables that you guys got to plug. All right, let's go to the fifth gas law. The fifth gas law is called Avogadro's law. Um, you guys might have, you guys might remember that word, that that dude avocado. Yeah, yeah, he's the dude that uh came up with the number for a mole six point zero two three times ten to the twenty third. Close enough, eight point something. Yeah. So. Um, Avogadro's law is very, it sounds really stupid, um, but and it, it looks really complicated, but it's actually really stupid and simple. Basically, if you keep the pressure and temperature the same, the only way to make the container bigger is to add more gas. That's basically what it's saying. So if you keep the pressure and temperature the same, the only way to change the volume, make it bigger or smaller, is you got to add more gas or take away gas, which is kind of obvious, but yes. So I thought that had to do with like vacuums, like the electric vacuum because there's still like gas in that. There's still gas in it. Okay. So yeah, so Avogadro is basically saying, okay, we're gonna keep pressure the same. The temperature is gonna be the same. So in this container, we're gonna keep it at I don't know one atm, and it's gonna stay at two seventy three kelvin. Okay. This cannot change for the starting point and the end point. What is the only way to change the volume? You gotta add more gas, or you take away gas. It's very, yeah. So if you like kind of pull really hard on like that bottom one. Like Without it. adding gas, you would change the pressure and the temperature. Oh, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you put in more gas, it'll make the thing bigger. Yeah, it's kind of dumb, but I guess he needed credit for his law. He needed one more thing named after him. Okay. Hmm? Avogadro's number 6.02 times 10 to the third. All right, so let's do a quick uh, problem. It's very simple. You just need to set up a ratio, um, but let's go into a problem using Avogadro's law. So here we have a chemical equation with oxygen gas, and hydrogen gas and oxygen gas reacting to form water vapor. Okay, it's telling you that at a certain temperature, uh, temperature and pressure, we have this volume and of H2 reacts with this volume of O2. If all the reactants are consumed, what volume of water vapor at the same temperature and pressure will we produce? So here it's telling us we're keeping the temperature and the pressure the same, okay? And so this is Avogadro's law. Basically, the volume and mole ratio has to stay the same. Okay, that's basically what it's telling us, that in or the only way to change the volume is to, is by changing the mole ratio, okay? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the ratio between hydrogen and water vapor and oxygen and water vapor, okay? So let's take a look at this volume right here. So we have 5.74 liters of H2, okay? Now what it's telling us is that the ratio between the volume and the moles have to stay the same. So if we're trying to figure out how much water vapor is produced, we're trying to find H2O, right? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna find the mole ratio between them. What's the ratio between H2 and H2O? Two to two, one to one, it's the same, right? And so it's gonna, what we can do is we can do two for the H2, the ratio is two to two. We can just cancel out the H2s these cancel out, and so we'll have 5.74 liters of H2O. That's basically what this law is telling us. It's, it's telling us that the ratio stays the same because the temperature and the pressure stays the same. It's a very like niche and very like specific set of circumstances it needs to, uh, it needs to keep, but it's when you see the same temperature and pressure, you got to keep the ratio the same. That's basically what it's telling us. Okay, so we can go to oxygen now. We've got 2.787 liters of oxygen. What's the ratio between oxygen and water vapor? One to two, yeah. So it'd be one to two. The oxygen will cancel out. And then you just need to double the um, the liters for, to get to H2O. Okay. And so you'll get 5.74 liters of H2O. So 
either way you do it, it confirms the same thing that the ratio is going to stay the same. Okay. Yeah. You're probably not going to get a question on this. But if you ever see this term, same temperature and pressure, just know the ratios stay the same. Alrighty, so we're gonna get into the most, I guess, important part of this unit, but do you guys have any questions on the first two sections we went over? Uh, characteristics of gases and the gas loss. You guys seem very tired. Was that test tiring? That's tough. I wonder what that feels like. Okay, let's get into the important part. So. Uh, the most important section of this unit is called the ideal gas equation law. And this is what the ideal gas law is, okay? So most important thing you guys need to write down is PV equals NRT. PV equals NRT. You're going to want to memorize that um, because you'll be using that a lot. PV equals NRT. Okay, now the ideal gas law, and they might ask you a question on, about this, is for an ideal gas. It's for a hypothetically perfect gas that no, that does not exist and will never exist. Okay, just like your ideal guy or girl. Okay, that ideal does not exist, but it's hypothetical. So we like to think about it, right? And so um, in an ideal gas, we assume that the molecules do not interact with each other, right? The molecules are flying around. They're bumping e into each other, but in an ideal gas, we're going to assume it does not interact with the other gas molecules. Just like your ideal guy or girl is going to go around, meet other guys and girls, but will not interact with any of them except for you. Okay? That kind of person does not exist. Okay, The combined volume of the molecules is much smaller than the volume it occupies. Basically, the molecules themselves don't contribute anything to the volume. Okay, So that's what an ideal gas is. Again, it doesn't really exist, but we since an ideal gas is very similar to real gases, we use this kind of in the beginning of chemistry. Um, later on in upper division chem class in college, we'll talk about real gases, where the gases start messing with each other, but the calculation difference is very minimal, so we don't really care for regular chemistry. Okay. Um, just make sure you guys know what these symbols stand for, P pressure, V volume, N moles, T temperature, and Kelvin. Now, R is the weird one. R is the gas constant, okay? And so this is the number that doesn't change. Now, there are a lot of different ways to measure or quantify the R value. It's right here. Um, the one that we use the most, though, is this one right here. And this is the one I recommend using most, 0 0.08206, okay? And this is when the other units for volume, pressure, moles, and Kelvin are these liters, atmospheres, moles, and Kelvin. Now, if you change the variables, so if I, instead of using, I don't know, instead of using atmospheres, if I wanna use Tor, then you have to change the gas constant as well, okay? But that gets kind of confusing, so I would highly recommend just always converting to liters, atmospheres, and Kelvin. That way you can use the 0 0.0821, yeah. Uh, um, I believe it's on your equation sheet. Yeah. I think I passed it back. Wait, didn't I give you guys an equation, Kif? No. I did, as for a birthday present. Damn, you guys wow. lost my birthday present. You lost the periodic table? You didn't see my, po my poem next to the door? Oh, yeah, I didn't see it. It is on, it is on your equation sheet. All right, guys, I'm going to give you a second birthday present. Okay, before Christmas present, or Christmas is coming up. Halloween, but I don't think Halloween. Do I get canceled? Dude, I'm a genius though. When I was 12, I figured out a hack Halloween. Now people knock on your door, right? You just put out an empty bowl outside, and, right? And just write take one. So when people come, it looks like everyone took your candy already. <laughs> Never had anyone knock, right? Dude, but then my wife's like, let's put out full-size candy bars. I'm like, girl, that's like 50 cents each at least. At least. 
You know what? You guys can bring your own things, but I think we have a test up here. Merry Christmas. Uh, you know, sure. It is my it is my second favorite holiday. So, as Easter is my favorite. Easter is my favorite because Jesus rose from the grave. That's the best day. All right, everyone got your equation sheet. Did you guys see your gas values, constants, whatever? If you guys lose this one, I will never forgive you. Okay. Sure, I'll give I'll give you a periodic table after. But if you guys lose this equation sheet, your grade is dead to me. Okay, so zero. You can get a hundred percent on the test. I'm just gonna put zero. My TAs can put a hundred, and I'm gonna override it to zero. Dude, you guys trying to mess up Miles' future? You know he's gonna have a family to feed when he grows up. He's gonna have bills to pay, taxes to pay. You're gonna mess up his grade. Anyway, what was I saying? Gas constant, gas constant, yeah. So this is the R value. So depending on what units of measurement you use for PV equals NRT, um, your R value is gonna change. But again, I highly recommend always convert to liters, atmospheres, and Kelvin. Okay, so with that being said, let's try 5.6 and then I'll have you guys try um, 5.7 on your own, okay? So it's telling us to calculate the volume of a gas in liters if 9.5 moles has a pressure of 0.88 ATM and a temperature of negative 50. So it's a lot of numbers, a lot of different things, but again, we're just gonna use the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. And all we gotta do is plug and chug, okay? So what variable are we looking for? Yeah, we're looking for volume, which is V, right? So we're gonna have to isolate V. We gotta make V feel alone. So the only way to make V alone is to get rid of the P. So we can isolate V by dividing by P on both sides. Now V is ostracized and alone. Okay, now we just plug in the values. So what is the N? What's the moles? Yeah, 9.5, so we plug in 9.5 moles. Okay, let's hold off on putting an R for a little bit. Um, temperature is in Celsius, so we got to change that to Kelvin, right? So I'm going to do this conversion for you just to make your lives a little bit easier. It's going to be 258.15 Kelvin. And then what is the pressure? Thank you. 0.88 atmospheres. Okay, and it's asking us to find the volume in liters, right? So we got atmospheres, Kelvin, and we got to find it in liters. So the value that we're going to use is this one right here. So our R value, we're going to put in 0 0.082. I like to round up to one, though, because writing that extra zero is hard work. Okay, and that will give us our final value in liters. Any questions about the R value? This one? Yeah. yeah, it's because um this, so for R, we can use any of these values right here, but the number changes depending on the un other units of measurement that we use. So you gotta you want you want to look on the right side here. So if you notice, uh we have moles, we have Kelvin, and we have atmosphere. So we're just gonna look here for moles, Kelvin, atmospheres. So we got moles, Kelvin, atmospheres, and that's gonna give us our volume in liters. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Are you still thinking about that? Elizabeth, do you see my classroom? It's just like my personality, bland, dead, plain, and and full and full of post-its. You would get along very well with my wife. She's like that. Sure. You'll, you'll be in charge though. Oh wait. I don't know. Ask Dr. Pot and Chloe. Anyway, did you guys solve this out? Guys, I know Christmas is amazing, but did you guys solve this out? Yeah? Okay, so 
my goodness. Look what you've done, Elizabeth. You got 228.689 liters. Sound good for volume? Oh. All right. Well, I will give you guys two minutes to either think about Christmas or try 5.7, whatever you prefer. You can do both at the same time. You know, some people are multitaskers. All right, so I'll let you guys try 5.7 and um, yeah, we'll go over in a second. Just can feel free to finish up, but let's go over this. Okay, so again, we're gonna be using PV equals NRT, but if you guys notice, some of our values are a little bit different, right? So we got four for the volume, we got four for the pressure, and we have uh, Celsius for the temperature. Now we're gonna have to convert this. So this is gonna be 298.15 Kelvin, and this is our temperature. Okay, now there are two different ways you can do this. You can either turn this into atmospheres or you can keep it in TOR. It doesn't matter, okay? The important thing is that we're calculating for N and it's going to be PV divided by RT, okay? So I'm going to keep it in TOR just because it's less work for me. But if you convert it into 7.6, you converted it into pressure or, or atmospheres, you're still going to get the same value, okay? So again, if you turned it into atmospheres, that's totally fine. You'll get the same answer as me, okay? So we're, we're going to have 740 tor for the pressure. Our volume is going to be 4 liters. Now for our R value, if you notice, we have liters, tor, and Kelvin. So we're going to find liters, tor, and Kelvin. That's going to give us moles. So that means here, instead of 0 0.082, we're going to use 62.36. Okay, and then for the temperature, it'll be 298.15. Okay, and again, if you convert it into atmospheres by dividing by 760, you will still get the exact same value. And the value that you should get is going to be, oh, it's gas molecules. You should get a 159, 0.159. Okay, now if you guys, again, did 0 0.082, that's okay. Just make sure you turn this into atmospheres. Okay, now we're not done with this problem because we're not looking for moles, right? We're looking for a number of gas molecules. So we would have to use Avocado's number and use 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And that'll give us a number of gas molecules. Okay. And if you want to check your answer, it'll be 9.58 times 10 to the 22nd. All right. Any questions about that one? Are you still thinking about Christmas? <laughs> You're like looking around the class, like what you can hang up, right? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Not so dimmy, that would like become red or like green. Yeah, phenol red. If we get phenol red. No, right? you don't want to eat phenol red. <laughs> no, I don't want to eat that. Give me a lavender turn red. Yeah, that would be just like You guys are so festive. Oh, All right, guys, we'll do we'll do uh one more problem. I'll have you guys try one more problem, and then after that, we'll close up. Okay. So I want you guys to try five point eight on your own. This is kind of my way of saying let's move on. Um, but yeah, five point eight. Okay, I'll give you guys about two minutes to try on your own, and then we'll go over it together. All righty, guys. So here, we're going to have to use the ideal gas law again. Shh. We're going to go over the ideal gas law. Now, we just need to plug in our value. So we got 10 liters. So which which uh, value is this? Volume, yes. About liters is volume. Okay, we got 10 PSI. PSI is pressure, yes. Okay, 10 Kelvin, which is temperature. And then we're looking for the mass of oxygen gas. Okay. Now, mass is not any of these variables, but if we find moles, right, we can find molar mass, exactly. 
dang, were you even absent? Right on track. It's like you were never gone. Okay, so we just need to plug in our values. However, we can't just plug in the values that we have because we don't have the R value for that. So we need to convert the temperature into Kelvin. So we should get 283.15 Kelvin. And then we need to convert 10 PSI into ATM by dividing by 14.7. So our ATM is going to be 0.68 ATM. And now we can plug and chug. So we're going to be solving for N again. So we can set up this equation right here, PV divided by RT. Now for pressure, we can plug in 0.68 ATM. For volume, we can plug in our 10 liters. And since we have atmospheres, Kelvin, and liters, we can use 0 0.0821 as our R value. And then for our temperature, 283.15 Kelvin. Okay. So for our moles, we should get 0.293, something like that. And we're talking about oxygen gas. Okay, so last step, we need to convert the moles into grams. So very simple. We just need to divide by or multiply by 32. So one mole is 32 grams. And so our final value is going to be 9.361 grams of O2. All right, and there you go. All righty, guys. So that's going to be it for today. Um, next time we come back, we'll talk more about the ideal gas law. But yeah, let me know if you guys got any questions.